It is Indiana in the Morning, presented as always by First Commonwealth Bank here on AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM. And on the telephone with me, John Eisenberg, in the interview with John about his book, The Streak, Lou Gehrig, Cal Ripken Jr., and Baseball's Most Historic Record, is brought to you by Bradley Books in the Indiana Mall. Good morning, John. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. It's good to have you with us. You're in Baltimore, so we can guess that uh, where this is going, it's going right over to Camden Yards, isn't it? Yes. Well, that's definitely uh, where everything uh, took place with Ripken all those years ago. Uh, not every game of his streak, but more than half of it at the, at the ballpark there, for sure. And that's where you start the book, is on the night that he broke the record, uh, Lou Gehrig's record, and that extraordinary, I just saw it over the weekend, as a matter of fact, on TV, the extraordinary moment that uh, it became an official game, and uh, Cal Ripken Jr. actually being pushed out of the dugout by his teammates. Take me back to that moment. Where were you right then? Well, I was in the Baltimore media, a uh, columnist at the Baltimore Sun, and I was in the front row of the press box at as good a seat as you could get. And, uh, yeah, it was quite a moment. Uh, you know, uh, my goal in, in doing this book was to bring some... Uh, I start the book with that scene, and my goal was to bring... Because everyone saw it, everybody remembers where they were. I hoped to bring some fresh voices to it, so I went back and interviewed, found uh, one of the policemen that was on the field, I found a fan with a good story, uh, an umpire, one of the umpires, Al Clark, on the field that night, uh, some some of the guys in the opposing dugout, uh, people playing for the California Angels, pitchers, all sorts of people just uh, that to, to have such, such memories of that night of history, and it made for a lot of fun to go back with all of them. So that's more than 20 years ago. Now you come out with the book, The Streak, and you incorporate Lou Gehrig. And, and I have to tell you that one of the, the great aspects of the book is the story of Lou, the story of Cal, but the stories that also involve other streaks and other ball players, even going into the, the 1800s, uh, and how fascinating each of those stories are. I don't know how deep you were into it then, but you had to get deeply into it in order to come up with some of this material. Yes, uh, I mean, my goal in, <clears throat> with the book, uh, I mean, I wanted to tell the story of the record. It, it just sort of uh, occurred to me that what an unusual record this is when you think about it. Number one, uh, no one's even, it's just been 20 years, but no one does this anymore. Uh, the longest active streak, I think, is 260 games. It's pretty much been eliminated from baseball. Uh, they're not trying to do it. And, and then also, it's a record where, unlike if you hit a bunch of home runs or have any other kind of uh, sure, they cheer you. They're going to cheer you regardless of what you do. But through the history of this record, there's always a, a flip side where people saying, why are you doing this? And, and who cares, honestly, that you're playing, just playing every day? Babe Ruth said it. Babe Ruth said it to Gary. Why are you doing this, Lou, basically? And uh, it, it caused quite a falling out, I might add. So uh, my, my goal was to to uh, take a deep dive into this thing and figure out where it came from and the psychology of it, and is it a good idea to do this every day? Many, many aspects of this record. Well, that's something that I wanted to get into, is the streak itself. A streak record becomes a character in the book. The streaks take on their own personalities. Yes, without doubt. Uh, Every one of them, and uh, you can go back to the 18... 70s, really. 18. The first guy that I really highlight is uh, uh, George Pinckney was a third baseman. We're going so far back. That he played for Brooklyn, but they weren't even the Dodgers yet. Uh, and, he, and he played with a without a glove. And so this is really the early days of baseball, and he played in 578 straight games. But no one knew it. I mean, they were just starting to keep statistics in baseball, if you can imagine that. Mm. So there, there's just all sorts of these crazy stories uh, that uh, that really uh, come to light when you dig deep into this and, and find out some of these guys that, uh, I mean, Pinckney, Everett Scott is uh, was the record holder that before Garrick was a little 120-pound shortstop. No one would think is an Iron Man, but uh, there's all sorts of stories in the history of this record. And, and Everett Scott actually played with Lou Gehrig on the Yankees as uh, Gehrig was getting set to begin his career. Let's talk a little bit about Lou Gehrig himself uh, and uh, the struggle uh, that he went through. We think of the struggle at the end of his life, but uh, Lou had some issues uh, as a struggling young ball player himself, and uh, 
And sometimes, you know, guys like Babe Ruth with those outsized personalities, uh, they can dwarf a guy, but Lou Gehrig refused to let that happen. Well, he was just such a good player. <laughs> I think that's what, that's what helped him uh, sort of uh, uh, escape Ruth's shadow. Not that anybody escaped. Anybody that played with Babe Ruth was in Babe Ruth's shadow. But Gehrig was a, a rare case. Once he made the lineup, just one of the great offensive players in the history of baseball, and this has been forgotten, I think, by because his streak uh, and his uh, his the sad story of his death. I mean, really, one of the sad stories of the 20th century America. Uh, but it's been forgotten what a great player he was. He hit 350. He drove in 175 runs one year, and so yes, he was just phenomenal, and uh, that enabled him to to uh, get along with Ruth for a long time until they, they started to have this falling out as, as Gary got a little bit older. I think he got tired of He was so good, he got tired of being in Babe Ruth's shadow. John Eisenberg is our guest. The book is The Streak, Lou Gehrig, Cal Ripken Jr., and baseball's most historic record. Let's talk about this fellow, Cal Ripken Jr. You were able to cover him for so many years uh, with the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, and not only Cal, but um, his whole family becomes involved in the lore that is the uh, Baltimore Orioles. And at some point, there had to be a realization that something very special is happening with Cal. And um, as you detail through the course of the book, e- eventually it, it gets to the point where um, Cal is is really, in terms of uh, his playing time, he's the one who's going to decide whether or not he's in the lineup, even though he might deny that at various points during the streak. Well, there's no doubt. It, it, it reached the point where he did not set out. I mean, that was not his goal, I think. was to, you know, I don't think anybody would go into a major league career saying, I'm going to set the consecutive game record. It's just not something you, you, would, you would aspire to, but it was in his DNA. It came from his father, uh, and his father was a baseball lifer, a uh, minor league coach, and 50 years in the game, and he really schooled Cal Jr. on on how to approach baseball and and there was no doubt that the the feeling from the dad was if you're you know you get there early you take bp you take uh uh, infield and you get your head in the game and if the manager wants you out there and you're healthy you get out there it was in his dna i mean he had a consecutive game streak in the minor leagues his last 258 games he played uh, every day and then once he made the orioles lineup he played an 8,000 straight inning so, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people sort of wondered about his motivations, and, that, and to this day they sort of wonder whether he put that streak first. And, well, you can debate that, but I, I don't think there's any doubt that his philosophy, uh, when you look at his, uh, his entire body of work, was that I'm supposed to be out there. That, that, my dad taught me that, and this is the way I approach baseball. I'm supposed to be out there. So yeah, it came. It would, in the end, it came up. Uh, it got so long that it was up to him to end it, and no one was going to end it because it was such an incredible number. With Cal Ripken Jr., with Lou Gehrig, um, Steve Garvey's streak is an example. Billy Williams' streak. Uh, all of these fellows that had streaks. Uh, just the tremendous amount of good fortune that you must have had in order to get out there, uh, because they had the same in- types of injuries that most other fellows got. It's just they were able to play through them. Uh, it really is extraordinary from that aspect as well, just the fact of the physically being able to get out there on the field. Yes, I, I mean, there's no doubt luck. You have to have some luck. Uh, well, if you th- I mean, Garrick, in the middle of his streak, broke his hand, uh, but it took a pitch off his hand and broke his hand and wound up in a cast, but it happened when he was in Japan playing in an exhibition game. So a pitch, a pitch hits you in the wrong place, you're out. But uh, Garrick avoided that in regular American League games. So did Cal. Uh, Billy Williams, all those guys you allude to, Steve Garvey. Steve Garvey, uh, who is, by the way, still the National League record holder, and who knows when that will be broken. It was 1,206 games that he played in. Uh, He had every intention. I mean, Cal always said, oh, I'm just doing this, and, and I'm not really trying to break the record. Garvey was like, I am trying to break the record. I want that Luke Garrett record. I think it's amazing, and I'm going for it. And he would have gotten pretty close, I think, but he broke his hand uh, in an incident. Uh, he was sliding into home, and that's that's the end of his streak right there. So some bad luck, you know. Bad luck does end streaks. And Garvey, one of the great Ironmen, uh, you know, it finally 
visited him. Bad luck did, and that was the end. Uh, our final moments here with John Eisenberg. The book is The Streak, Lou Gehrig, Cal Ripken Jr., and baseball's most historic record. Um, it must not have been an easy task to track down uh, all of these statistics. Um, baseball has struggled with this particular uh, statistic down through the years, establishing just what is a consecutive game streak. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, the research and the resources that you were able to use. Well, it was really fun. This is what I do. It's my ninth book, and I love getting into uh, researching some history. And, uh, yeah, I, I uncovered many surprising things. Uh, um, the language that determined what a game, a consecutive, uh, what a game appearance would be was not in the Major League Rule Book until 1973. So th- until then, it was just like, well, if you played, you played. And uh, they got much more specific uh, in 1973. And before then, there was a lot of, uh, I mean, you could kind of mess around with this record a little bit. Uh, and, and the most uh, egregious example of it I, actually took place in Pittsburgh, mm. uh, where uh, Stan Musial, uh, act can, can, he extended his, what became a National League record streak, without ever setting foot on the field. <laughs> Because the, they put him in the lineup, and the umpires determined that was good enough. Yeah, you, that, that you know, as you tell that story, that's just fascinating. And Stan, he could have gone home and slept in Denora that night and not even come to the ballpark. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But uh, uh, the he was batting for he's batting fifth, top of the first, two on and two out. They pinch hit for him, and so he never played. But the umpires had told the manager before the game, if you do that, we will allow it because he was in the in the lineup. So, and it took baseball another 18 years to close that loophole, but no one, no one really used that loophole. And when Musial did break the record a few years later, he pretty much admitted, uh, you know, I'm glad to have this record, but I can't remember his exact quote, but it was along the lines of, I, I think I skirted things a little bit to get here. He was kind of laughing about it. <laughs> the book is The Streak, Lou Gehrig, Cal Ripken Jr., and baseball's most historic record, Wonderful read from John Eisenberg. Hey, thanks for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.